the Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. That's right, that's right, that's right, to Zion, to Zion. I'm Elder Rikosh, y'all along with Elder Yarak today for your Sabbath lesson. All praises be to the Most High, Ahaya Bahashim Yeshaya, where we walk. We hear for a what? A very serious, a very serious Bible class today. Leading into our Hebrew and Bible Academy tomorrow. I'd like to say shalom. And before I go into things, please, as you file into this class, a very deep class, uh, please hit the like button, being that we are shadow banned. After the lesson, please go to our YouTube page, Agathering144. Okay. Go directly there to see if they have unsubscribed you. All right. They're trying to do everything to suppress this information coming from this church. Make sure if they unsubscribe you, subscribe again, hit the bell, and then after hitting the bell, state that you would like to receive all notifications and all lives, all everything, okay? These are the hurdles they're putting people through. You have to jump through to actually get the content you're looking for, okay? So please, make sure after this, you check to make sure YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you, all right? And if you are subscribed, hitting the subscription is not enough, okay? You must hit the bell on the main page and also state that you would like all notifications when we are 
broadcasting or or and or uploading okay all right we're gonna jump right in we're gonna jump right in but before we do so we're going to do the Hebrew Hebrew credo and jump right in Shemaya Sha'ala Ahaya Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Akhat 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 Hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Hear O Israel the Lord our God is one that's right, brothers and sisters. The Lord, our God, is one. He's the God above all gods. Okay? He's the God of the Hebrews, the God of Israel, according to the Bible. The God who sent his son Christ to die as a sacrifice so that we, as a people, would one day have access to the promise, which will give us what? Access to the throne. Rulership on earth is the promise given to Abraham, and this is why our people everywhere in the earth is under attack. That's right. I would like to thank the Most High for sending Christ, because if it wasn't so, we would stay under these conditions, under these evil conditions, being targeted by the Gentiles forever. Our children would become perpetual slaves to these Gentile nations, and I thank the Most High that judgment will soon come knocking. Okay? Knocking at the door. He's coming to save our people. All right. You see the title. The release of hell on the population. Okay? The release of hell on the population. Which means... There's, there's what I would call an organized chaos to aim towards confusing the world. And it's intentional so that no one can understand that what? Our people or people who believe in Christ, not just the Israelites, but the people who believe in Christ who are Gentiles. So that they could never understand that it's a religious attack, that we're under a spiritual attack. Organized chaos. And through Christ, who shines a light on darkness, that's right. It allow us to make sense of what's going on real time. So that we can tell people, listen, it's not what they're telling you on the news. It's not what they're stating. The reasons for them implementing a police state and stepping up a prison complex. Okay? It's never the reason they're telling you. Okay? It's never the reason. Reject everything they're putting out there politically. Critical race theory, reject it. It's another tactic by the evildoers to make you believe they're concerned with teaching correct history for our people. No. The correct history is coming out right here. That we're the children of Israel. And unless you want to get rid of the theories and bring forth the truth of why you've been attacking us, we don't want to hear it and we don't want you teaching our children. We don't want you teaching our children anything. Leave that up to us to teach our children how to view history. How to view history. So we don't need your critical race theory. We don't need anything politically that's set up because we understand what the, polit what the political apparatus was set up for. And we're going to show it today. We're also going to show out of the Bible how to navigate around the chaos. Okay? Because the chaos is not just on the outside of us. There's something that their top sorcerers like Sigmund Freud, his nephew, Edward Bernays, understood. That's within all people. It's a nature that came with the sin of Adam and Eve, and they found a way to trigger it. That's right, through psychology, to stare individuals into their plans to be utilized as soldiers against God and against God's people. 
They've learned how to tap into that spirit. And only the knowledge of Christ can have us overcome that malignant root. They've learned how to trigger that spirit and by doing so, using people, that's right, unconsciously, without conscience, using people to go against themselves, their own interest. And I'm going to go into that today. The release of hell on the population, right? Now, before we go in, right, I need you all to get your pen pads, that's right, and your Bibles in front of you. We'll also be going into some extra biblical text today, leading into our Hebrew and Bible Academy tomorrow. Our Hebrew and Bible Academy, the promise seed. We're going to show you the war that have always been waged against our people, okay? Since Noah, since Noah's ark subsided on Mount Ararat, we've been at war. That's right. We've been at war, folks. We're going to show you how the Nephilim was able to escape to this side and begin to uh, reprocreate with Ham's daughters, bringing forth Nephilim, what they would call a higher intellect being to control the serpent seed. Right now, Esau, Esau is the one that's being utilized to bring forth Nephilim agenda. He's the modern day Pharaoh and he's the modern day Cain. So unless you, un unless you know the biblical narrative, You'll be confused to everything going on in the earth today, folks. Okay. Another thing you're going to realize today through this lesson, not only how to navigate individually, you're also going to learn, listen to me clearly, you're also going to learn that the political system is a religious system. It's a religious system. They'll make you believe there's a separation between church and state and politics have no place with religion when the system itself is Satan's religion against God's people. But how would you know that? You must learn the Bible. All right. So we're going to flow right into the promised seed tomorrow in the Hebrew and Bible Academy, folks. To show you that there was always a chosen seed from the beginning who would replace Adam as what? The ruler on earth. That who would replace Adam, who God gave dominion. And they know that position belongs to us. That's not racist. That's not hating other people. That's prophecy. This is why they suppress us. This is why, this is why, folks, everywhere the children of Israel are, the lost sheep, it's systematically, what, at a lower level than Edomite countries and other countries. This is what we would call, keep in mind, folks, our oppression, no matter where we are, is by design. It's by design. Look at Africa, all the resources they have there, but yet they cannot advance. You think that's by chance? Look at our neighborhoods, even if we're living in a first world rich country. Look at our circumstance compared to everyone else. Do you think that's by chance? Do you think that's just a coincidence? No, folks. We're the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the Gentiles must keep the confusion going. That's right. Drum up a cloud of smoke so that people cannot see that they're strategically destroying us in the midst of it. And this is why I titled this today, The Release of Hell on the Population. 
because they don't care how many of their own people they destroy as long as they keep us down. So I behoove even the Gentile nations to get lockstep with what's going on right here because they don't care about you either. In the midst of them looking to destroy us, they will use you as collateral damage. Just, just so that they, they can have the PR uh, upper ground to claim, well, it's not just black people we are destroying. Look at this white family. Look at this, look at this uh, uh, Latino family. See? So any other people, you'll be collateral damage. They don't care about you either, as long as they get to us. So now, let's go. And we're going to start with our Lord and Savior. Some people call him Jesus. His name isn't Jesus. There was no J's during the time of Christ when he was walking the earth. So it would be impossible for people, the disciples, it would be impossible for you to be casting out demons in the name of Jesus when he wasn't doing so. There was no J's until our modern times. The J is only, only a few hundred years old. <laughs> so it's upon the devil to keep the true name, which cast out spirits and have power over all spirits on earth. It's, it behooved the devil to keep his name from the people. Give me Roman 10 and 13. Keep in mind here. Listen to me clearly. His name isn't Jesus and his name isn't Yehoshua or Yeshua either. See? The Jewish people purposely gave you Joshua or Yeshua. And it's on record that they've done this, folks. Because they honor Joshua as a deliverer over the true Christ they hate. So even if you believe in Christ, they'll tell you his name is Yehoshua. So, so by proxy, it would give honor to whom they claim they honor, Joshua. His name was hidden in the Dead Sea Scrolls. His name is also in the scriptures as save or our savior. In the Hebrew, it's Yeshua. The only name under heaven whereby man can be saved. And they know it. So the devil kept that from you. Why? That's right. The pagans work with what? Power through invocation. That's right. And exorcism which they can use certain gods or certain names to undo the lower gods or the lower names. So if they can strategically move Christ's name off the table, the greatest name that opposes the devil, then what? They know that they're bringing us, that we're going into a gunfight with a knife now, spiritually. Romans 10 and 13, read it. Romans 10 and 13. Read. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, they know this. There's only one name. And I know some people might, might and this is what the simpletons do out there who don't understand the power of spiritual warfare. You're going to learn a lot about spiritual warfare in this lesson today. They don't just say stuff like this. Well, Jesus know my heart. God knew my heart. Or all people really believe the same God. We just calling it in different languages and doing it different ways. That's utterly ridiculous. That's utterly ridiculous, folks. You don't even understand that the Gentiles are pagans. They worship Satan. They worship all the fallen gods, all the deities. When the Bible tell you that there's only one God. So how can you claim that we're all worshiping the same God? Okay, and calling on, well, it's just one God at the top anyway. The East Indians or the Asians and, 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 and the white people, we all, Africa, we all may be doing it different, but it's all the same God. Utterly ridiculous. You don't have no knowledge of spiritual warfare in the real war we, we, we've been we were born in. 
We were born under. And the pagans are looking at us and the Satanists are looking at us saying, oh, you think that we all worshiping the same God, huh? Okay, let me stick my foot further in, into you and destroy and sacrifice more of your children. Because if, because if we're all worshiping the same God in all these religions, where is the evil? Where is Satan? So we have to get out of that mindset that all people are in the mindset of doing good according to their religion. These religions, <laughs> that's right, these religions, folks, are ancient religions that were created to destroy righteousness out of the earth. Was 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 created to destroy our children. Read it again. Romans 10 and 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How can you call on a Christ in whom you have not believed? What is it that you've been... Think about it. Suppose you've been taught another Christ. Just hypothetically here. Suppose you believe that Christ was born December 25th and is about to celebrate Christmas. <laughs> That's not the Christ that we read of in the Bible. Christ wasn't born on December 25th. That was incarnate of Nimrod, which is Talmud. Satan's son has nothing to do with Christ. So how can you call on the name of a Christ whom you have not believed when you've been taught another Christ by pagans? Read. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How can you believe on a Christ and whom you have not heard. None of you anywhere ever heard Christ's true name. And that was intentionally. That was intentional. The same way we have never heard our true name as the children of Israel. That was also intentional. <laughs> so they took our name away and took the only one who could save us name away. They hate God and they hate us. They hate Christ and they hate us because we're one and the same with our Lord. Read. And how should they hear without a preacher? And how would you one day hear the true name unless it was preached in the earth? That's in the Bible, folks. How would you ever hear the name when they would systematically and purposely through the religion? That's right. Cross out God and Christ's name all together and deliver us their pagan gods. That's why one of the most of one of the most groundbreaking teachings in this particular time is when the name of the Most High was revealed. There's only one name. And you have people try to skirt around it that used to call on the tetragrammaton Yahweh. Whom, when you break down the Hebrew, that's Satan. Yah is a god, and Hava or Hova is mischief or wickedness. The god of wickedness. And that's the god of Judaism. Samuel, or Satan himself. Another name is Zeus. The god of the Greeks, Romans, and before that, it was Samuel. Satan himself, the God of the Canaanites, whom the Edomites made allegiance with in Mount Seir when they lost the blessings and the promise. Okay? Read the whole thing now. Hit the like button now. We're going in. Read, read the whole thing. Romans 10 and 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear that someone would come in the earth and preach the true name? And you have people out there. Well, the, the, the scriptures say that the law is more important than the name. They're liars. That scripture isn't saying that. They're liars. One has nothing to do with the other. We should follow the law and call on the true name. Read. And how shall they preach 
except they be sent. And how would someone preach the true name of God unless God sent them? Read. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. What's the gospel of peace? The gospel of peace is a gospel or the good news Christ would bring forth. Peace between who? Us and our God, because by breaking the law, God was at war with our forefathers. And because of that, we're living a generational curse. As the children of Israel, we live in a generational curse. So Christ's blood made it through that sacrifice where our God, higher, would be at peace with us. If we agree to follow what our forefathers bro has broken, the law, that he would now accept us back. And this is why the enemy, the synagogue of Satan, pushed sin, degradation, and deprivation, and all types of harlotry. They pushed this and incentivized this for our people in these communities. Because they, they know that if we're not sinning, that's right. The pendulum swings from us being judged to them. By us sinning intentionally, they could continually be just like their father, the devil, the accuser of the brethren. And bring before God's altar our sins to claim that we're not worthy and that they should be the chosen people instead of us. See? They know if we don't sin, then now... Everyone begin to look at them now. But now they can hide their sin in the midst of incentivizing evil amongst our community. And this is why they hate the fact we're saying we're Israel. That we're coming back to the knowledge because guess what? The more we begin to follow the law and the, the sin and curse comes off of us and everyone begin to look at them. And they know all eyeballs are on them now that they can't hide anymore. So now they're trying to politically rally around some word called anti-Semitism so that no one can actually, so, so that now they can get on the defense. They're trying to get on the defense now. Well, no. If we're the Israelites and we're following God's law and you believe in the Torah, shouldn't you accept better people trying to fix their community under the law like you do in your communities? Shouldn't you really highlight that through your media? But they won't. Because they know what? That's right. The rules of engagement. They understand the war. If we're not sinning, then now all eyes point on them. Points to them. Now our God will take the, take the punishment off of us. And deal with the real sinners on this earth who, who perpetrate and promote it. See? Read on. The end of ten, uh, Romans 10 and 15. And bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. What is the gospel? Gospel is the good news. And what is the good news? The Israelites are back. I don't care what you push. You cannot stop Bible prophecies. We're here. And we're here to stay until what? Until we assume the throne of our forefathers. And there's nothing you can do about it. Hence the reason Christ came. The good news. Hold that, elder. And let's go to Matthew. 10, 5, and 6. And let's give, brothers and sisters, the good news of our Lord and Savior. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 5. Mm -hmm. These 12 Yeshua sent forth. 12 disciples. And guess what? All of the 12 disciples were Israelites. All of them. Timothy, also. Let's make it clear because they try to claim he was a Gentile. That's a lie. Timothy was an Israelite, okay? He was an Israelite, folks. On top of that, he was an Hellenist. 
That's why he was uncircumcised, because he was following the ways of the Europeans, the Greeks, the Edomites. See? These 12, 12 disciples, they were all Israelites. Read. And commanded them, saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles. So originally, originally, Christ commanded the disciples don't go into the way of the Gentiles. Right? So the original good news was for God, God's people first. It wasn't until Christ's death or res and resurrection that he commanded to go teach all people. Why? Because Israelites were scattered amongst all people. So if he just concentrated on one, one race, then what? We would lose the lost sheep who were already scattered. So Christ said, listen, teach everybody. Because there, there will be a role for Israelites and there will be a role for Gentiles who follow my path. Okay, both will be blessed, but there will, there, but there will only be one promise. The blessed people would assume the throne. That's right. The chosen people who are blessed would assume the throne. The Gentiles who walk in my path will serve the children of Israel in my kingdom. See, the way it was supposed to be from the beginning when the Most High said to, to Rebekah, between Jacob and Esau, that's right, the elder shall serve the younger. See, Esau know that, he, that his children, he was meant to serve, according to the Bible. A righteous servitude, not this nonsense we see here. And he'll do anything to sustain his power over Jacob. Read. The end of Matthew 10 and 5. And into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Read. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I would rather you go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, what people are more lost than us, folks? We think we're African. We think we're black. We think we're African American. We think we're Negro. We th and, if, and, and then we're looking for everything. We, let, we, I'm Kimmy. Simple as the days old. What lost? You got, you got a one household. One household. And in the household, you can have the father who's a Muslim. The mother, who's a Christian. The son, who's Kimmy. Is that not loss? And other races of people, when you go into the Middle East, or when you see the Arabs or these East, East Indians, whatever their mother and fathers are under religiously, they're under. Without question, why? Because, because there's an honor that comes with that. Honor thy father and mother. Only our people that's running around, you know, in one household with six different religions. That's lost. If you're divided on how to serve one God, how can your family unite with under any level of power? That's a lost people. And the most ignorant too, when you think about it. Because when you try to show someone something, they'll look at you and say, well, you got your opinion and I got mine. Listen, you can think it's an opinion if you want, but the enemy have their foot in your behind. The enemy is attacking us all, whether you want to ignore it or not. So the most ignorant thing to say is, well, we got our own opinion while all of us are being systematically stomped out. By what? An organized effort to destroy the lost sheep of Israel. Hosea 4 and 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. They love, they, they love to be lied to it, tell you in Isaiah. And when you try to point out the fact that we're under attack, they become even more ignorant. Well, that's your opinion. I got my own opinion. And, we, we, and then they'll say something ridiculous as, we'll all figure out when we see God later. 
Folks, there's no hope for people like that. They don't want to be saved. See? That's why we're going to put this out there for the lost sheep, the gospel. And guess what? You can get with this or you can get with what's out there. Because I'm going to show you what we're really dealing with today. Read that again. Matthew 10 and 5. Come on. These 12 Yeshua sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. And Christ said, Don't go into the, the land of Samaria, because that's where Judaism was, folks. The original Judaism before Edomites grabbed onto it during the time of Herakonis. You had Babylonians and all types of other races of people placed in the land of Israel, the northern parts of Samaria, instead of the children of Israel. And they were sacrificing their children to a Adrimelech, but still was following the law at the same time, folks. That became your new religion of Judaism. Christ said, don't go over there because they're sacrificing kids over there in the name of God. Know your history. That's 2 Kings 17 to why that's right. Why Christ told them not to go into Samaria. And this is why he told the Samaritan woman in John the fourth chapter, you worship, you know not what, for salvation is of the Jews. It's going to come a day where you or your fathers will not be worshiping on this mountain. Because they weren't the people claiming. They were claiming to be the people just like these other people today who try to use labels as a defense. Anti, anti. Oh, I'm a victim. Please don't harm me. Oh, you see what happened to me over in Europe. Oh, my God. Don't say anything against us. Folks, the whole deal, I'm telling you right now, Christ was pointing out the religion they follow today. This is why they reject Christ and they reject the Old Testament too. And, and they worship demons and follow their satanic teachers who came up with the, the Babylonian Talmud. See? We, we're dropping it all the day, folks. Christ said don't go to the Samaritans because they were sacrificing children, but still claiming that they were the children of Israel. They were not the Israelites according to blood. They were, is, they, were, they were what you would call today Jewish. But they were of other races. Babylonian, Hamitic, East Indian, uh, different parts of, of the countries of Assyria. They were placed in the land instead of the children of Israel in Samaria. And that's why Christ said, don't go over there. We're not over there. Read it again. Go not to the, the way of the Samaritans. Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Brothers and sisters, we are a thousand likes down. I have a lot of information today. A lot of this information I'm going into today, we usually save a lot of it strictly for the academy lessons. So the, the least you can do is do what? Hit the like button. It doesn't cost you anything for that. Help us out here. Read on. Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Read. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I would rather you go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What lost sheep? The ten tribes that were scattered. Our people were being destroyed by the Greeks, the Romans. That's, that's the good news. Read. And, and as, as you, you go... go and as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? So who is the kingdom of heaven? Read that last piece. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, let these people know that the true throne rulership that was lost by Adam belongs to them. That we weren't created or we weren't born to serve the Gentile nations. 
change the minds of God's people. We weren't born just to have jobs. We weren't born to serve these nations. We were born to rule. Change the mindset of these people. Who's the kingdom of heaven? Right? No. Let me get it. Been a while since I got that. <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 11 and 12. That's it. Let's read it. Matthew 11 and 12. Read it. And from the days of John the Baptist until now. The unto the days of John the Baptist until now. The, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence by the hands of the Gentiles. Led by Edomites who are Romans. So we are the kingdom of heaven, folks. This is why that's this is why we're the trendsetters for the earth. But instead of our children benefiting from our, our trend setting, the Gentiles are benefiting. Because we don't understand that what? We're the salt of the earth, folks. It shows in everything we do. It's the shame to understand, to have the glory of God and live with the glory of God and without understanding its power and relevant for your own people, re relevance for your own people. The other nations see it. We're the kingdom of heaven, folks. Christ was bringing the kingdom of heaven. The same blood that, that ran through his, his, his veins that was shed on the heavenly temple is the same blood which runs through ours. Hence the reason why the devil through his science and healthcare garbage is trying to change our genetics. Okay? We're the kingdom of heaven. It says from the time of John even up until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. We're the kingdom. Read. And the violent... Take it by force. And the violence, which is our brother led by Esau, is taking us by force. See, but they just can't just do it outright and say, listen, we're in a spiritual warfare for power or Esau to keep power. He have to promote criminality, evil, drugs, sin, sex, art and sexual behavior amongst our people. So that he can have the moral high ground to push laws that executes the violence against us. See? He can't just come right out and say, I'm at war with my brother Jacob. So he so they have so they created a smoke screen. They incentivize all that's evil and put it on our people, targeting our children, so that they can now point to us and say, look at the black on black crime. I mean. You know, y'all really need to do something about yourselves. And then they'll have some woman crying out of her mind because she don't know any better because they go find the, they look, the news go find the most pathetic situation in every area when news pop off. And she's crying, says, no, Lord, what's going on with my babies? Please send the armies up in here. Please send the military up in here to do something to help my babies. So that they can perpetrate more violence on our people. This is all strategic, folks. Christ said the kingdom of heaven suffered by separate violence. We're the kingdom. Every kingdom was built on what? The blood, sweat, and tears, ingenuity, and intelligence of the children of Israel. Don't make, don't believe that story that they got us and civilized us out of Africa. There was no electricity here until they brought the slaves here. 
The pyramid itself, brothers and sisters, was a conductor, a natural conductor, where electricity was being ran in, in ancient Egypt. The first power plant known in the earth in the what? In the Mesopotamian area. Huh? That's where Tesla got the technology from to realize the earth is a conductor. Okay. And they'll make you believe a, a Edomite, a white child sacrificer. And that's not my opinion. Ben Franklin was found after, after he was dead already. All types of bones of children found under his house in England and his house here in Philadelphia. They'll make you believe that he discovered electricity with a string kite in a key. We brought electricity here. The only thing they do is the same thing they do today. They put their name on everything we create. Okay? They put their name on everything we create because we are the kingdom. Read. And the violent take it by force. And the violence take it by force. This is why I'm going into this lesson. That's right. The release of hell on the population. It's the violence that takes us by force. But what they have to do is straight is, is to shape a narrative. A narrative that they need to come in with military force, might, and all that against crime. Yeah, they got to be tough on crime. And check out the people who are claiming that they need to be tough on crime. They stole land. They stole people and, and claimed that they discovered the land in the people. Put in their history books that they discovered land. There was nothing here until they got here. Right? <laughs> They kill the people to set up colonies and set up to set up institutions as well as civilizations. And then after that, they begin to draft laws claiming that they're going to be a tough on crime. The greatest criminals ever known to mankind, folks. What's wrong with this picture? See? See? But now that we find out we're Israelites, they don't like how, the, how it feels, right? Because when it comes to the moral high ground, the Scot that's right, the scholastic understanding and the true doctrine of Christ, they don't like how it feels when the rabbit has the gun. What gun? I'm going to show you right here. The Bible. You're no longer invisible, Esau. We see you. The only thing we're putting out here now, we, we, we're, teaching, we're teaching where you got your system from so that our people can navigate your aggression and violence against them. And brothers and sisters, Christ told us that we'd be under this violence and you better understand how to operate under it or you're taken. And they'll have a convenient story to send one of their, state, their Satanists from these news circulations or news uh, channels to spin it every, itch, every which way they want while burying you. You better get on board with this because I'm going to tell you, they, they've released hell on the people, folks. Now, it says the violence, take it by force. Now, Christ also told us what? Hold that, right? And I need you to get real quick. I need you to get, get real quick. Matthew 24, where it talks about as the days of Noah. As in the days of Noah. Let's read it. Go down to about 38. 24. What it says there? Yeah, that's it. 37. 37, yes. 
Matthew 24 and 37. Matthew 24 and 37, read. But as the days of Noah were. As the days of Noah were. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Ah. So now we'll understand the real times we're living under and who's behind it all when it comes to, to the organized chaos. If we understand Christ says what? As in the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So if we want to know who's behind everything, what's really going on, we must go back to what? The days of Noah. Folks, Esau is the modern day Cain. Now I know a lot of people are saying that, well, hold up, Cain, they, they're speaking this garbage about reincarnation and Esau was reincarnated in the mother's womb as, as Cain, which is utterly ridiculous. He was in a womb with Jacob too. It was, it was one cell that split it into twins. What are y'all talking about? Total idiocy. There is no reincarnation. There's resurrection. There's a place called hell that holds souls until the change. All right. Esau today is the modern day Cain, the modern day Nimrod, Cain, because he set up his political construct like Cain was ordered to. Excuse me. He's the modern day Nimrod because he created a construct led by the Babylonian religion that they call Catholics today to bring the whole world under the mind of Satan, Simramesis, and Nimrod Talmuz, the virgin child, so that they can all work together with an economy, a religious system, as well as a construct to one day get from beyond the firmament of the earth, to go out in space. That was, that's right, that was, you got it, Nimrod's plan. And then, after Nimrod, Esau is the modern day Pharaoh. Why? How? He would need servants, particularly our people, like it was in Egypt, to build the construct. See? Esau is all of them wrapped up into one. But his greatest gift that he had at the very end being the, being the Wizard of Oz, his greatest tactic of war became psychology. Why? Because you cannot sustain an empire forcing people, uh, setting up a construct where people would serve through force and violence. You had to convince the people that, it's volunt that they're volunteering their servitude. You have to convince the people it's good to serve and to die for a nation who have destroyed you. Psychology is their greatest weapon. See? So this is a high-tech pharaoh we're dealing with. But his name is Esau. I call him the invisible man. Because he would like to say he's everybody. Okay? Which makes him invisible. I'm European, okay? I'm Jaffa. Uh, I'm Jewish. Uh, I'm white. Uh, I'm Latino. Hey, I'm North American Indian. See? I'm Christian. I'm Muslim. I'm atheist. The invisible man. Folks, this is why they hate the Bible. Because we know you're not Japheth. 
The one name they'll always disagree with being called, I'm speaking of the powers that be, the English family, and I'm going into them in the academy. The one name that they would reject is Esau. Because if you know he's Esau, you'll understand everything, that the warfare we're under right now, and know exactly who's perpetrating it. As the days of Noah, read, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And it's deep because, uh, 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 you rock, when Harry was on the show, and, uh, you know, hmm. the, uh, when he was on the broadcast, not the show, and um, people were saying that he's not coming back, I had more faith in him than the people did. Hmm. They must have known something. I, maybe I missed... The look in his eyes when certain things was going on, when I started asking questions, he probably was, wasn't prepared or wasn't prompt to answer. But there's one question I was going to ask him that probably would have resonated above it all if he would have came back. And I would have asked him, outside of your, li outside of your religion, are you not a white man? Let's put your religion to the side real quick. Your ethnicity, are you white? That's why I would have asked him. And listen, and this is why, listen, there's many, this, we have many white people in the church. I don't have nothing against white people. But we don't have any white people claiming to be some, someone they're not. They believe in Christ. They believe in the true doctrine. I would have asked him that question. So, and then I would have asked him, okay, if you're white, what makes you different I'm talking about what makes you any different, even though you're practicing Judaism, what makes you, according to blood, any different than a white Catholic? Not what you're practicing, not whether or not, you, not, not, whether or not you're following Judaism. What would make you different than a white Catholic or a white Irishman? I was going to ask him that question. And it's not to be personal because we're trying to get here because we're trying to get drilled to the bottom of this. Why? Because, because why? I'm living a curse according to my bloodline. And I don't care what religion I follow as a, as, as a black man, I cannot escape the prophecies concerning what my forefathers done, has done. Okay? I'm an Israelite. My forefathers sinned. Therefore, my, we were brought into captivity. And I don't care what religion I follow. I'm a product of that prophecy. And the same way you. It doesn't matter whether or not you are a Jewish person. Uh, whether or not you are Catholic. It doesn't matter whether or not you're Irish. You are subjected to the prophecies according to what's on your fathers. So you can't hide under religion. <laughs> right? Let's get down to the nitty gritty here. You are who your father is. Now, just because your family decided to convert to another religion later, you do not escape what's coming to you according to prophecy. And see, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have anything to say after that because he wouldn't, they don't even know how to react to that. You can no longer become the invisible man now that it's revealed your Esau. And I don't have no problem with you. I'm just get listen. I'm just clearing up the muck you've created. I have no problem with you. What's coming to you, that's between you and my God. I have no problem what happened to us. Okay? It wasn't because your power, white man, that our people went into captivity. It was because we sinned against our God. You're not, oh, and from the celestial view on earth, you're not that powerful. Do you have power? Absolutely. But you only have the power that was given you through the sins of our forefathers. What happens when our people begin to follow God and come back to that knowledge? Well, the pendulum swings. 
It swings off of us. And now our God will be focused on you. See? As the days of Noah come on. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. What was that? What was going on in the days of Noah? Well, you're going to find out shortly. The release of hell on the population. How do you know what that hell is? We must go back before the flood. We're going. Hold tight. We'll be right back with part two. The Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that He used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. Close the door. Let's go back to that scripture. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, 38. We'll Matthew 24 and 38. Let's read it. For as in the days of Noah, that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. They were eating and drinking. Marrying and given in marriage. Marrying and given into marriage. Read. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Until the day Noah entered into the ark. So something was going on which led to God destroying the earth through a flood. As in the days of Noah, then shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Right? They were marrying and giving into marriage. These weren't regular marriages, folks, he's talking about. And I'm going to prove to you. These weren't regular marriages. Look at the marriages that they're highlighting and celebrating today. See? You had hermaphrodites. You had a lot of things going on due to the cross splicing the science that was going on back then, as well as celestial intervention with women. So there was a, ge a genetic change in the earth. Science was taken over. Science was taken over to try to throw, off, throw the earth off of balance. As a pretext... The whole plan was destroy the families of Seth to stop the chosen seed from coming through that bloodline, knowing that chosen seed would one day judge the unrighteous, including the God they serve, Satan. So they started cross splicing animals, all of that, it tells us in the book of Jasher, Enoch, Jubilees. Making what? 
making the earth unbearable, causing all types of chaos, confusion. As in the days of Noah, read. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be, read. For in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Now, it's, you know it's not talking about God's marriage, Adam and Eve. See? Because the Bible tell you, with marriage, the bed is undefiled. The Most High loves marriages. According to what? The, tradi the traditional sense of marriage. See? <laughs> but these were other types of marriages. Like the marriages our modern day. Our modern day politicians are pushing. They're not pushing equality. They're pushing the sin of Cain on the population. Come on. Just to say, and it's to show you that what we're saying is valid, and they know this, in the footnotes of this particular Bible, for that same verse, it references Genesis 6. It references Genesis 6. Mm -hmm. Folks, it wasn't talking about <laughs> regular marriages. It's talking about these freak mar marriages and all that. Biden just signed a, a marriage equality bill. What the Hades is that? Mar what the heck? What the, this, this is the trick words, okay? Like the, what, like the brother say, I'm white and I say so. Uh, mar when are we? What, who's fighting for marriage equality? At the same time, they're tearing up and destroying traditional family. It's clear they hate men, and it's clear they hate men and women coming together under the values that we were taught with the Bible. What, so what do you mean marriage equality bill? No. They're incentivizing, that's right, the evildoers who hate God against family. That's what they call marriage equality. So who was marrying and giving in a marriage? Until the days of Noah that entered into the ark. So what was going on? What was going on? Let's, let me show you what was going on. Now, I'm going to be, I'm going to give you all a lot today, but I'm transitioning right here from here into the academy tomorrow where I'm going into the meat of things. I'm actually going into the war with the giants, folks, tomorrow to prove to you also that Ruth was an Israelite. She wasn't a Moabite. I can prove that, and I'm going to prove that during that war. Okay. Who were the people in the, in, the, in the country of Moab when Judah came to get a wife in the country of Moab? I'm going to prove to you tomorrow, folks, that Ruth 100% was an Israelite, okay? Christ doesn't have, he doesn't have any Moabite blood from the father or mother side. And I'm proving that tomorrow since I have to go into that war anyway. I went from tracing the serpent seed last week, and now I'm going into the promise seed to show you that we're under attack. We've been under attack since the beginning and who we're really warring against tomorrow. In the book, the Josephus. In the book of the Josephus, let me pull it up here. <clears throat> I highlighted it here so you all can see it. Right. A matter of fact, let me get rid of that. One moment. Yeah, that's the one there. Okay, perfect. In the book of the Josephus here. Right. I'm going to pull it up and show you what was happening. What exactly led to the flood? Well, there was a city. Let me highlight this here. Matter of fact, put it here. In the book of Josephus, the 31st verse, which is, uh, it's the book one, chapter two, in the Josephus. What was going on during the time of Cain? It says here. 
And when Cain had traveled over many countries, he with his wife built a city named Nod. Now, his wife, for those who don't know, name was Awan. Okay? There was no Adamites or other races of people outside of the fallen, the fallen angels in the earth. Okay? Awan was Cain's sister. That's who he married. He didn't marry some Adamites and all that other crap they got out there with these theories, okay? He married his sister Awan. At this time, there was no law of incest. Why? The Most High said male and female must be fruitful and multiply up until the nations would be divided in the earth. So there was no sin as incest. And when Cain traveled over many countries, he with his wife built a city named Nod, which is a place so called, and there he settled his abode, where also he had children. However, he did not accept of his punishment in order to amendment. But to increase his wickedness, for he only aimed to procure everything that was for his own bodily pleasure. He would set up a city, a country, with the mindset of, of do as thou will. Satisfy your flesh. Though it obliged him to be injurious, to his neighbors. He augmented his household substance with much wealth by rapine and violence. That's right. No one around him was safe. He was using rapine and violence against those he should have been neighborly with. Does that sound familiar? He, ex he excited his acquaintance to procure pleasures and spoils by robbery. Well, don't call it robbery. We'll just change the name under psychology and we'll say we discovered. Okay. And became a great leader of men into wicked courses. He also introduced a change in the way of simplicity wherein men lived before and was the author of measures and weights. He set up an economy, folks, to systematically bar people out of wealth. See? <laughs> so that you cannot outright say he's stealing from you, but the economy would make what? A systems of haves and have-nots, especially if he could get all of the products that's, need, that's needed for survival or existence under his power. See, this is a system we're under now that we call a democracy. To control the earth by setting up a, money, a monetary system. And whereas they live innocently and generously while they knew nothing of such arts, he changed the world into cunning craftiness. He made it where everyone had to become shifty to survive. Let's fake it till we make it. <laughs> so when you set up a system of criminality, it begat more criminality where people have to become shady like him and others to actually exist. <laughs> Maybe that was the invention of the conscious community too. A bunch of charlatans, a bunch of shady characters claiming they, they black power. As in the days of Noah. What was going on in the days of Noah? Huh? What was going on? Well, El well, Elder, I need you to get real quick Genesis 6 and 1. Okay. 
Genesis 6 and 1. Let's read it. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. Read. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Th these were the daughters of Cain. Read. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all that which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. 120 years. Now when it says the sons of God saw the daughters of men, these were angels. They were watchers. Okay? They were supposed to do what? Watch, report, and guide mankind. But they came down on Mount Hermon. It's a mountain in Syria right till this day. Like the paramount picture show the stars coming to the earth. Paramount is Mount Hermon. The gods that the people of Hollywood, the land of angels, worship. They saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Right? Now how do we know that these were gods or angels? Hold that and go to 1 Peter 2 and 4. I mean, 2 Peter 2 and 4. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 4. Read. For if God spared not the angels that sin. For God spared not the angels that sin. What was the sin? When the Son of God came to the daughters of men and seen that they were fair and brought forth children. This is why Christ said, as in the days of Noah, they shall be marrying and giving in to marriage. Genetic freaks. Genetic freaks were being engineered from these children. Hence the reason we're seeing what? You see it. Gene therapy. We're seeing male, do, uh, a male taking certain types of therapy to become female, female taking certain type of therapy to become male. That's how close we are, we are to the earth getting destroyed, folks. And now they're all married and given in a marriage, and I'm showing you where it started. The chaos. Because obviously, these particular products of sin would become what? Anti-God anti-family and would become political enemies against the righteous on earth. And these are the, these are they they're incentivizing against us today. They hate God. So they're getting fun they, they're being fun by the elite to attack family to get to our children. Read it. And delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So it says the what that sinned? For if God spared not the angels that sinned. The angels that sinned. So Peter knew about this too. The evil we were warring against. The evil. Peter knew of this. The disciples knew of this. And guess what? They were bound. One of the main ones that are bound was Azazel. He later became, in legend, the Egyptian god Osiris. He's at the bottom of the Great Pyramid. Who built the pyramid? That's pre-flood the Great Pyramid. Uriel and the angels built that as a construct to hold the fallen ones. It's a gateway to hell. Whether you believe it or not. What I'm breaking down today is the origin of paganism. That all the elite powers and politicians till this day go to the pyramid to pay homage to the God they deem gave them the technology to rule over God's people. The children of Israel, who we are. The angels that sent, read. But cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world. And spared not the old world. But saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. 
So it led to the destruction of the earth. Cain began to make wicked cities. He began to set up a system that would bar people out. Then they started using science to create animals that would destroy the regular animals, and like, like Monsanto and all of them are doing today. And on top of that, that dinosaurs, prehistoric animals, all of that came during this time through genetic cross splicing. And God said, if we don't stop this, there'll be no promise. There'll be no promised seed to finish what I began in Adam. So he sent Uriel and the angels to bound those who were in the earth causing all of this evil and folks the fallen ones were your first politicians. They were your judges over the earth. But if you don't know this narrative, you'll never understand. See? Now, let's go. Because there's someone else that's important in this particular scenario pre-flood. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, New Testament, 11 and 5. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 5. Come on. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Come on. And was not found. He was translated, so he was taken. So Enoch was taken. He didn't die. He was changed into a celestial form and presented himself before God. He was presented before God. The Most High changed him. He became one of the heavenly elders. There's 24 of them. Elijah, he's another one who was translated and didn't see death. But this happened, what I'm saying, before the flood today. Enoch was the righteous, the highest, the righteous pre-flood. He was the prophet, king, priest, Melchizedek. Okay. Melchizedek isn't a man. It's a position. It's a person who holds two positions at once. King and priest. Like Adam was established. Okay. It isn't a man. It's a position. It's not someone's name. There wasn't a mother who named their child uh, uh, Melchizedek. It means one that holds both positions. King and priest. And Christ came after that order to unite both of those into one instead of it being divided between two of the tribes, Levi and Judah. So Enoch was translated, read, that he should not see death and was not found. Come on. Because God has translated. Because God translated Enoch. Now, why was Enoch taken? We're going to show you. Why was he brought before the throne of the Almighty? We'll, we'll teach you today. But Jude gives us some insight in the, in the Bible. A small little book before the book of Revelation. Let's go to Jude 1 and 6. Jude 1 and 6. Read. And the angels which kept not their first estate. And the angels which kept not their first estate. And there's a lot of theories out there, nonsense, where they talk about these angels are Israelites. That's the lowest level of understanding that anyone could ever think about, folks. It's ridiculous. If the Bible says these are angels, they're angels. But because it conflict with, with the faulty doctrine... They'll be like, no, let me go to a precept to show you these angels are Israelites. No, thank you. Okay. I'm going to stick with the word angel right here. Okay. And the angels that what? Left their, kept, which kept not their first estate. These angels which kept not their first estate. The angels which kept not their first estate were the sons of God who came and dealt with the daughters of men. Genesis 6. Their first estate is heaven. That's where they used to live before the judgment. Read. But left their own habitation. Heaven. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness 
unto the judgment of the great day. Exactly. So every place you see a pyramid, you know what's at the bottom of it. There's a rock slid in place, okay, by which the, with the, which the Egyptians claim was placed there by the gods. That no one can move, no man can move that rock in place. That, that's right. That's the doorway between earth and hell. The angels put it there. Mainly, it was Uriel who was sent. To bond Azazel and his fellows. One of the seven archangels. Peter knew about this. Now let's go down to the. Hold up. Let's go down to the, the 13th verse. Read. Verse 13. Raging waves of the sea. Forming out of their own shame. Come on. Wandering stars. They became what? Wandering stars. They became wandering stars. Hold on. Hold on. Let me show you. Let me show you. Because Hollywood tell you all the time about this. Hollywood puts it right in your face. The Satanists put this right in your face, folks. They put this right in your face every time. They put it right in your face. Let's do it again. The, the, the synagogue of Satan puts it in your face. You say you caught something else? Yeah. When the, when the angels came down on that picture, the stars came down, they touched the water, right? They touched the water. And the water is has a reflection of the mountain. So they're talking about as above, so below. So this, this, these angels are in hell. Exactly. They are in hell. They <laughs> touched the waters because we know the bottom of the sea is the ceiling of hell. They've been telling you the whole time, these Satanists, who are now putting out these anti rhetorics and all these crap. They said, oh, we're being attacked. They're devil worshipers. They use Hollywood as a form of psychology to push their psychology or their progression towards the agenda. All the agendas I mentioned earlier, which is the agenda of Cain to destroy our people. It started in the beginning. Mount Hermon. Read it again. Verse 13. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, wandering stars. Wandering stars over Paramount, which is what? You got it. Mount Hermon. Whom the Gentiles also call Mount Olympus, the Mount of the Gods. There's other mountains they call that too, but it started right here pre-flood. Huh? Read. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever? Because why, why, why is it re reserved the blackness of darkness forever? You got it. They were bound. They were bound, folks. But not before they, they let hell loose on earth. Now, when you read down, Jude is quoting the exact quote from the book of Enoch. Enoch left a testimony. Enoch left a testimony. Jude and the disciples quoted from the testimony so that you'll understand the real war we're under. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. Principalities and powers. The workers of evil in dark places. Well, the science and technology that we are living under today, that we see happening right now, that we, that, that we think is just science, it's really, yeah, technology and ingenuity given to what? The sons and daughters of Cain. The evildoers. 
to war against us, folks. They're the children of darkness. We are the children of light. See? Now you see why they, they had a problem with Christ, folks? They couldn't hide their true intentions under psychology. They couldn't do a Jedi mind trick on Christ to have Christ see them anything other than who they were, the children of the devil. Let's read it. Verse 14. Yep. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saying. Enoch prophesied of them. Now, how would you know this if he isn't reading what we're reading right now? Saying what? Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now, let's do this real quick. Let's go now to the book of Enoch, right? Let's go to the book of Enoch real quick. I so happen to have one in front of me. Right? Let's go to the book of Enoch. Now we're going straight to Enoch and we're going to the sixth chapter, right? Hold that and get the sixth chapter for me, Elder Yorah. We're going directly to the sixth chapter, translated directly out of, translated directly out of the, the Hebrew. It was found in the Crumrim Caves. It was found at the same time, they found many records in the Crumbum Caves, right? The Dead Sea Scrolls, they found Enoch that was rescribed by the Levites, whom was called the Essenes. That's why it tells us at the very end in the book of Revelation, the 12th, child, 12, 12th chapter, excuse me, that the earth shall help the woman. It's not talking about no pictures being seen of black people. The earth helping the woman are the records that would do what? Shine a light on the false doctrine we've learned through false religion, modern day Christianity, modern day Islam, the enemy's satanic doctrines against the children of God. So we're going straight to the sixth chapter, right? Right? One second, let me get it here. Huh? No, I'm going straight to this one. Even though it's the same quote. When you go to Enoch 1 and 9, it's the exact quote we find in the book of Jude. That's what Jude was quoting from. Okay? Let's start book of Enoch, the sixth chapter. Let's read it. Enoch 6 and 1. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. Beautiful daughters. These are the daughters of Cain. Read. And the angels, the children of the heaven. The sons of God, which are the angels that sinned. Read. Saw and lusted after them and said one to another. Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men. And beget us children. Read. And Sam Jazel, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed. And I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. Come on. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan. Come but on. But to do this thing. Yep. Then swear they all together and bound themselves 
by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all 200. 200 angels, folks, read. Who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. On the summit of Mount Hermon. Paramount. You want to know the old gods that the Jewish and other people really worship? These are the gods. During the time of Cain, they began to make idols to these gods to put the fear of the fallen angels within the homes of those cities Cain built. To, to pay homage to the gods with Satan at the helm for giving them the ingenuity, technology, and the knowledge of warfare that would help them overtake the earth. See? They set up religious temples after these gods. The same religion, religious temples that the East Indians have today. That's right, folks. The same temples that the Muslims have today. The same temples the Catholics would set up to pay homage to the gods who gave them technology and power to put man, God's people, under fear and servitude to the fallen ones. Right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go here because, you know, I'm, I'm going to cover some of this tomorrow, but I got a lot after the flood to deal with. But I want to show you what they began to teach, right? Let's go straight to what they began to teach, right? Let's start at the seventh chapter now. Enoch 7 and 1. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one. And they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms. Charms. And enchantments. Enchantments. Witchcraft. And the, and the cutting of roots. And made them acquainted with plants. Come on. And they became pregnant. And they bare great giants. And they bare great giants. Like it says in Genesis 6. Nephilim. And in order to what? Satisfy the appetite of the giants. They had to create giant animals. Because originally the giants were eating people. That was the beginning of sacrificing people. So they began to cross splice and make animals to satisfy the appetites of the Nephilim. Okay, and the Most High said, listen Noah, I'm going to bring my animals to your ark. Put them in two by two. And guess what? I'm going to kill off the whole earth. The earth must be destroyed or they, they're going to kill you all. Now it's deep because Cain, when you read the stories of Cain, brothers and sisters, who was really down with Satan to push all this through, he was the, he was the, the height of, of what you would call a diplomat. He understood diplomacy and he would speak to us and, and our fathers as if he had our best interests at heart. And how all of this technology is going to benefit all of us. That's how Cain was operating, folks. When you go into the stories of Cain. <laughs> how all of this is going to benefit us. Hey, with these animals, hey, we can actually pick. We have to. They're stronger than oxes. We can actually plow quicker. I mean, you, we got these big things up in here. You know, man, we can plow a whole, we can plow a whole field in a day. So they're going to always use psychology to sell death to us. Right? Finish reading. Whose height was 3,000 L's, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. Come on. And when men could no longer sustain them. When men could no longer sustain them, read. The giants turned against them. They and, turned against them. And devoured mankind. And devoured mankind, read. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh. They started cross splicing everything. Genetically modified earth. So the food was getting tainted. And then they would take animals in the labs and create different animals. 
as in the days of Noah, folks. Read. And drink blood. And drink blood. Read. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. And Azazel taught men to make swords. Swords. And knives. And knives. Why? Because now they're, they're making warfare tools against those who don't know anything about death or killing. They're looking to kill us off. Right? Read. And shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them. Now, that's just one level of warfare. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the physical warfare Azazel taught. Now, Azazel is, is Osiris, that demon, that angel, that wicked one who's actually bound under the Great Pyramid till this day. Barack Obama years ago went and visited that pyramid. All of your elite secret societies worship Azazel, folks. But that's the physical part of it. But there's another way of waging warfare on mankind. I'm going to show you. This making, they're making what? Breastplates, swords for physical warfare. But there's another level of warfare. What is it? Read. And bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids. And the beautifying of the eyelids. Now, this is no disrespect to y'all sisters because you don't know any better. This is the reason why, and I'm going to use other women out there uh, uh, from, the fashion, from the fashion realm. This is why women out there shave off their eyebrows and paint on new ones. I know some people don't like the bushy stuff and like the arch and all that. But folks, Esau was coming, not Esau, but the devil under Cain taught by angels, came with a new look. And with this look, it was another level of warfare. It was a look that would bring men down to a carnal animal level through lust. Through lust. And it's deep, folks, how this thing take. What we're teaching now, if the whole earth was to listen, would change everything because it's the gospel from the heavens. But I can take you to a video right now where a woman is getting her eyebrows arched, folks. And it's over one billion views. And if it was nothing to it, the women wouldn't do it. But they don't know that it's a tool that was used to weaken men. Right? Because now your desire will be unto her. When the Bible says her desire is supposed to be unto you. See, woman warfare was taught. Woman warfare. Read. And all kinds of costly stones and all colored tinctures. Read. Verse 2. And there arose much godlessness. And when they started changing their fashion and all that, folks, it also tell you in the book of Jasher, that the angels came with a potion that would alleviate women from getting pregnant. Birth control pills? So that they can keep their snatched, their snatched state when it comes to their stomachs. Right? Now every, you know, men are attracted to, you know, a shapely, beautiful woman. We don't have nothing against that. Right? But you have to understand why the angels wanted to push this so. Because then it would change the mind of woman where women would be valued over kings. 
turning things upside down. Turning things upside down, folks. So then what happens? Women start to believe they're better than men. Satan did that. And now men will go to war. There are all types of things. Because why? Now the woman is not looking modest. Other men are hitting on their woman. Other men are trying to get with their women. And what's going on? Men are killing other men over women. Children are being left with no fathers. Because she's out there being seen. Instagram anyone? See? <laughs> oh, y'all thought this stuff with Instagram and all this was fairly new. Now, nah, folks, I'm going to show you how they released hell on everyone. It started back then. Read on. And they committed fornication. And after this, fornication began to go on the uptick. It was about vanity. It was about how you look. It was about competing with other people so that they don't get the attention you should be getting. And now men are being caught up into this trap of vanity, losing their lives. See? And then once they beautify themselves, what goes with the beautif beautifying them themselves, seeing themselves in the mirror, and now the attention... Comes what? Comes, let me tell you, outlandish standards. Now, because of all this, someone believed that they have standards or requests, really delusional requests from just a normal man. See, Satan did this. So now it'll, it'll be it'll be a more tough, uh, you know, it would be, you know, a serious tough circumstances having two people match with each other, come together, have children, teach them of our God. The whole world would become delusional now. Right now. Let's go straight to it. Let's go to Enoch 15. Enoch 15. Right? And see, this is what I tell my sons. I told my son, you know, I wish I had the knowledge when I was in my 20s that I have now. I told my sons. Do they listen? That's a whole nother uh, uh, class. But I try to tell them. Don't chase a woman. Chase God. If you have God and you have Christ, everything will fall in place. Adam wasn't looking for Eve. There was a need for Eve to be a helpmeet with so much work to do. Get your work together first where there's a need for a helpmeet. Not put yourself in debt by linking in with someone when now you got to provide and you don't have enough. And, she, and then this woman will begin to resent you. Because after, after, the, after the bells and whistles, after all of the hype of meeting someone new wears off, someone is just looking at you and what you got and what you can provide. Chase God. Get the wisdom of the ages. Build yourself with the Almighty. Understand what life is about. 
and the most high will bring the rib. He'll take the rib from you. She'll come out of nowhere and say, you know what? Now let me help meet what you've built. Okay, that's the way it should be. That's the way it was. Right? Now let's go to uh, uh, Book of Enoch, the 15th chapter. Enoch 15 and 1. Read. And he answered and said to me, and I heard his voice. Read. Fear not, Enoch. Fear not, Enoch. Thou righteous man and scribe of righteousness. Approach hither and hear my voice. So this is what happens when the Lord said he translated Enoch and he was seen not. This is where our God moves Enoch into the heavenly realm to give him the judgment on the angels who sinned, who were in earth. This is what the disciples knew, Christ knew. All of the evil that we've just read is the evil that have destroyed mankind since the beginning. Vanity. And we're going to show you that spirit. How, how, how they would know exactly to trigger us. in To get us absorbed into their satanic world of chaos. They know it's something in us that they can trigger us into their world. To be utilized or harmed under their world. I'm going to show y'all that in a moment. Finish reading. And go, say to the watchers of heaven. Say to the watchers of heaven, read. Who have sent thee to intercede for them. Let me show you. Read right there. You should intercede for men and not men for you. So the angels sent Enoch to intercede for them. They drew a petition and asked Enoch to talk to God and say, well, listen, They've erred on this earth. Can they be received back into the heavenly realm for their course and actions before the sin? Can they be allowed back into the celestial realm? And God said, no. He shouldn't send men for them. They, should, they can't send men for them. When I sent them to you, <laughs> they're supposed to be delivering my messages to earth. Read. Wherefore have ye left the high, holy, and eternal heaven, and lain with women, and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, and taken to yourselves wives? They and, left their own habitation. Read. And done like the children of earth, and begotten giants as your sons. And begotten giants as your sons. Nephilim. Read. And though ye were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women. You have defiled yourselves with the blood of women. The celestial said. The angels were not to deal with people. Read. And have gotten children with the blood of flesh. And as the children of men have lusted after the flesh and blood. As those also do who die and perish. Therefore have I given them wives also that they might impregnate them, impregnate them and begot children by them, that thus nothing might be wanting to them on earth. Come on. But you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life, and immortal for all generations of the world. And therefore I have not appointed wives for you. For as for the spiritual ones of the heaven, in heaven is their dwelling. And now the giants... Who are produced from the spirits of flesh. Now the giants. Flesh, hold up. Take your time. Excuse me. The giants who are produced from the spirits of what? The spirits and flesh. Because there was no place initially in creation for these spirits. They, were, they became Nephilim. What to do with these spirits when they die? Read. Shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. Shall become evil spirits upon the earth. The origin of demons. The origin of demons is what we're reading now. Evil spirits came from this creation or through this sin. Angels with people. Read. And on the earth shall be their dwelling. Come on. 
evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies. Come on. Because they are born from men. Because they are born from men. And from the holy watchers is their beginning and primal origin. Read. They shall be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. Evil spirits shall they be called. Read. As for the spirits of heaven, in heaven shall be their dwelling. Come on. But as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall be their dwelling. Come on. And the spirits of the giants afflict. They afflict. Oppress. Oppress. Destroy. Destroy. Attack. Attack. Do battle. Do battle. And work destruction on the earth. And work destruction on the earth. So these are the spirits Satan used through temptation to trigger mankind. Right? They need to trigger us so that we will do what? Oppress, destroy, attack, fight one another, work destruction, and cause trouble. So the, this is the natural nature of a demon. But in order for them to have us acting out this on earth, they must gain our body as hosts. They must enter to cause confusion and conflict. So Satan set up a system that would allow these spirits to enter our communities, enter our bodies, so that we can be utilized for chaos. And what is the main tool that allow them access? Sin. Because they were produced out of sin. And disobedience. So if the media and others can promote sin amongst our communities, we'll, we're hosts for the spirits and demons they worship. Are y'all getting this now? Now that brings a whole nother level of understanding to why God gave Moses the law. Not just so that we can escape what the enemy's doing or do right amongst our communities and amongst one another. So that we could not be host for these spirits who are orbiting our communities and are watching from what? The invisible. They're watching us at all times seeking to gain entry. Now let's, let's talk about something about these spirits, these demons. And I'll show you how the enemy set up a system that would allow us to entertain these spirits. Right? Just like Cain did. Read that last piece again. Enoch 15 and 11. And the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, destroy, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. And cause trouble. They take no food. They take no food. But nevertheless, hunger. But they're hungry. See? Because they were insatiable. They had an insatiable, app an, an, an insatiable appetite before the flood. So when the spirits come in you, they what? They make it where you want to eat. Not to satisfy yourself, but to satisfy the demon. Gluttony is a sin that leads to death. Once you die being obese and being diagnosed with all these different diseases, they'll just find another host. So this is why the Western world pushes obesity because they choose the obese first to satisfy their satanic evil insatiable appetite but that's why Christ told us that some spirits cannot go out but through fasting and praying fasting and praying 
Now, they, they work two ways when it comes to food. If you are, if you recognize that you need a balance and a healthy lifestyle and you follow God and Christ, they, that's right. They have no use for your body. They cannot entertain your body like they would like to. They'll find someone else. If you are a person who don't like to eat, but it's strictly to keep your what? Your vanity for sin, where you're anorexic and you always feel that uh, you're not big enough, the demon stays. It'll just use your body for the sexual appetite until you die. Then they'll find someone else. See? And they're going to do this until, until they're judged. Let's read that last piece again. And these spirits, excuse me, uh, oh, no, they read, take no food. Read the 12th verse. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst. Come on. And cause offenses. Come on. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men. They shall rise up against the children of men, read. And against the women. And against the women, read. Because they have proceeded from them. Come on. From the days of the slaughter and destruction of death of the giants, from the souls of whose flesh the spirits, having gone forth, shall destroy without incurring judgment. Thus shall they destroy unto the day of the consummation, the great judgment in which the age shall be consummated over the watchers and the godless. Yea, shall be wholly consummated. Shall be wholly consummated. So they are able to do what? They are able to do this until the judgment, until Christ returns. Now, they are afraid of the Most High in Christ and those who can recognize who they are. But this system has made what? A population. A population of sinners where the demons will always would always have access. See? Will always have access. Now, I wanted to throw it out there. And this is why. Hold it and get Matthew 8 and 28 when Christ ran into a man who was overtaken with demons. Matthew 8 and 28. Now tomorrow I'm going to start on the other side of the flood to show you where the spirits began to attack and make people sick. Systematic six. That's right. Systematic sickness, where the governments are really behind the sicknesses they're claiming they're curing. Yeah. The Hegelian, the Hegelian dialectic, right? <laughs> sickness is a tool so that demons can gain access. That's why I'm not down with the pharmaceutical apparatus at all. I understand what it's about. It's pre-flood information, knowledge. After the flood, they began to make people sick. A sick, sick people are what? They, they are more agreeable people. <laughs> They're so busy trying to heal themselves, they have no time to actually stand and fight whom they should be fighting. Right? Sickness is a tool by the devil. So they have set up a system where they, where they control sicknesses. And they'll give you another sickness while claiming they're satisfying the symptom of your current sickness. It's a tool by the devil in the Nephilim. This is how they gain bodies. Right? But let's read Matthew 8 and 28. Let's read it. Matthew 8 and 28. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils. There met him two possessed with devils. This is Christ now. Read. Coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. 
That's right. The demons had these people losing their minds. They would attack those who came amongst them. Attack, do battle, oppress. Right? Now, usually, the demons gradually, you know, take hold of a person through some type of gateway drug. Marijuana. Oh, yeah, when I, we do marijuana, yeah, you get the munchies. To satisfy who? To satisfy what? The, insati the insatiable appetite of the demons. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, folks. We have it all. Tomorrow, I'm actually going into the, into the, uh, the Voyage Manuscript. This is why you got dispensaries for marijuana all over the place for your children. Satan have, have he's, he's up the ante. He says, listen, we just want to give them drugs for free because we're losing, we're losing the children of Israel. They're telling their children to come back to the law. No servants, no slaves, no empire. Just give them drugs. Give them drug paraphernalia. Right? Read. Verse 29. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, what, son what, of God? What have we have to do with you? So they recognized Christ, the, who was born to die shed his blood on the heavenly tables and to one day come back to judge all right unrighteousness. Starting with what happened before the flood and in, 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 in the heavens is written that these demons will, will be judged with their fathers. So they asked Christ, what? Art thou come to hither to torment us, torment us before the time? Have you come hither to torment us? Take your time. To torment us? Before the time? Have you come to torment us before the time? What time? The 120 jubilees from the time of sin. Where it says, uh, but that their day shall be 120 years. Well, they would have 6,000 years from the sin of Adam before their judgment begins. 6,000 years so that the earth can be created all over again the same time period and rest the 7,000th year where there's no more death, no more sin, no more attacks, where Satan is bound. So even the Nephilim understood that they only have a certain amount of time to continue on earth attacking us. Read. Verse 30. And there was a good way off from them, a herd of many swine. What verse? When you go back to see the verse. 30. And there was a good way off from them, a herd of many swine feeding. Come on. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. If you, if you cast us out, because they know Christ could have judged them there in the name of Yeshua, and could have cast them into hell with their fathers. They say, if you're going to cast us out, cast us into the swine. Why do you think they they have promoted swine or pigs as the other white meat? Under the ancient Babylonians, swine was used under Babylonian exorcisms. Christ cast out spirits. They don't. Christ don't deal with exorcism. Exorcism is an agreement with a fallen God or demon to do what? To bind a lesser God or demon. That's what exorcism, that means you're still in agreement with the dark side. See? And under Babylonian exorcisms, and later the Catholics and other picked pick this up, if a man was was riddled with demons and, and his family had money, they would pay the Babylonian priests to cast out the spirit through exorcism. But in order to do so, a host had to volunteer themselves 
for the spirit to enter another being it would it would satisfy itself with those same demons from the beginning so the babylonians instead of using people they thought the biology or the makeup of a pig which is close to what they would call human could be utilized as a substitute host i taught this in the academy folks so if a person had demons in them, they would put a pig, they would tie a pig down next to him under Babylon and the high priest would come in through exorcism and ask the gods to move the spirit from the person to the pigs. And if they're doing, if they were doing that back then, what do you think they're doing with pigs now? That's why God said, don't touch it. You can't even touch his dead flesh because it was used in pagan rituals for demons. As temporal host in the pig until they can find another person. If you wonder why our people can live in our neighborhoods and see garbage and see stuff that, that's inhumane and live amongst it without even thinking it's normal? That's why. Because it's the spirits that come with what they're eating. A pig will get clean and find some mud to wallow in. See? See? You wonder why the earth is filled with demons? Well, there's nothing new under the sun. Our people just doesn't understand. You don't understand spiritual warfare and what the elite use to wage secret spiritual warfare against you. Hence the reason God gave us the law. Huh? We got about 3,300 people in here, but please, we're still about, what, 500 likes down. I got a little bit more. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Come on now. Help me out here. Y'all get, getting, getting a lot of information today now, right? Now, so this spirit, these spirits must have something in agreement with people, right? Now, it says, I'm going to show you that. So, a matter of fact, let's finish this and I'm going to go to the next point. Matthew 8 and 32. Come on. And he said unto them, go. And when they would come out, they went into the herd of swine. They went into the herd of swine. And behold, the herd of swine, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea. So the demons had the swine run into the waters. Why? So that they can drown the swine and now float over the waters to find new hosts. Now if they can do all these things and make the particular pigs commit suicide or kill themselves. What do you think they can do if you put these same spirits in people? And they get prescribed something that says you may have suicidal thoughts. It could be in the food or any other substance the devils have created to wage war against us. Right? Now, how through psychology they were able to have us agree with death? To agree with the demonology that came and the evil that came with the fallen ones. Right? They know there's something in us. Something in us that can be tempted to lust. That can, that can be tempted to do what? To become initiates into Satan's army against all that's good. The law have us do what? The law has us where we can balance that out and recognize the evil that's born in us and, and to put that evil into sub, in subjection 
under subjection. But you have to recognize it's there at all times. The enemy realizes it's there. How do you know that? Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud, so happened to be Jewish, had a nephew by the name of Bernays, Edward Bernays. Now, these were both Jewish men. Now, were they pushing Torah? No. What they found was there was a nature in man that if they if if the advertisers can tap into, they found a nature that would, which is lust, vanity, and all of that, where they could convince people to do what they wanted them to do. Where they can convince people to buy things they didn't need. <laughs> Freud's nephew origins of public relations. Top psychologist, sorceress. Years ago, Americans grabbed toast and coffee for breakfast. Public relations pioneer Edward Bernays changed that. Bernays used his uncle Sigmund Freud's ideas to help convince the public, among mm. other things, that bacon and eggs was the real was the true all-American breakfast. They can make you buy or think anything they want because they, they know there's something in you they can tap into that would, that would have you do their bidding. Top demons right here. Top demons. So the advertisers or the companies, the corporations, Satan's corporations, would go to these demons and ask, well, I got this new startup company and I need, I, I need people to buy in. And in response is, these are Christians. These are people who believe in God. They believe in the Bible. Okay. They're set in their traditional ways. How can I have them buy or do something that's against their moral values? They would go to these demons here. See? I'm going to show you what, what, what Bernays and... Sigmund Freud understood, right? Now, also, MGM, those that are behind those black and white cartoons and all these Warner Brothers that are behind Bugs Bunny and all those, do you know that there was a problem with the new carrots and all that where people weren't buying carrots? In the early 20s and 30s and all that, People really weren't buying carrots like that because people were farming on their own and really eating their own produce. But they came up with Bugs Bunny eating a carrot. People started buying carrots. You had spinach crops. When now the market was where they wanted to push spinach when they, when they began to deal with new spinach crops. They came up with Popeye the Cellar Man. And when you eat spinach, you become strong. And through psychology, every mother began to have a can of spinach in front of their children saying, eat your spinach. You know it makes you strong like Popeye. Now, it's okay if they're telling you to do healthy things, right? Using this so-called psychology. But suppose they can put evil wickedness, lust, and sin on that same machine. I'm going to show you how the devil work. Right? This is, how, this is how these devils work. Right? Look at this. I need you all to see this. History today. The original influencer an uncanny ability to mold public desire made Edward to mold public desire made Edward Bernays one of the 20th century's most influential yet invisible characters 
the architect of modern mass manipulation. You had tobacco companies where only at one time the elite under their little clubs or lodges were smoking cigarettes. It wasn't a thing. Women knew not to smoke cigarettes because that was more so a man thing. They started putting women with those little sticks and cigarettes in movies so that now they can tap into what? A new buying class, a new customers, where now not just men smoke cigarettes, they can make what? 100% profit if they can get men and women smoking cigarettes. Yeah, and give them cancer too, according to the side of your cigarettes. Sicknesses and now making it cool for women to kill themselves. They did the same thing with feminism. They came up with a contract. I mean, they came up with a campaign, the media people, and they called cigarettes torches of freedom and had them march in New York where these lesbians would have cigarettes and holding cigarettes saying, We're free. We can do what the, we can smoke what the men smoke. Oh, yeah. There you go. And they knew everything they could convince these women to do, our sisters would follow. Torches of freedom. See, you have a woman walking with a cigarette and a dog with no man around in 1929. And what you see with a lot of these women today looking just like her, they got, there's no man around. They have a cigarette and a dog. That was the plan. Or a cat. All right. They go their plan. Now, how was they able to tap into this? Well, let's go to second address in your pocket for three and 21. I'm going to show you how it comes around full circle. And then they did the same thing later in the 50s and 60s. It made people think that it's an abuse. It's abuse. If women are in the home taking care of their children, it was like, hold up now, women will work for less. It's a supply and demand. If we can get the women in the workforce and call it freedom, we'll flood the market, which destroys supply and demand, and then we can lower wages because there's more people than jobs. So now we can, what, multiply the slave pool. And while the man and woman is working, get to the minds of their children. Their focus won't be the children and instilling God in them. We'll teach their children. We'll get them in the schools. We'll make their children sick. We will destroy their brains and eventually destroy society like we did before the flood. Huh? So they, they was always folk, they always use what they call the letter people for all these campaigns. People who already had issues against God. They use witch covens, motorcycle clubs. They use all types of these different little pockets of Satanists. And these people would be the people taking pictures and all that to promote these media outlets agendas. To make you believe that their concerns are our concerns. But it's really satanic psychology. To disconnect us from the only God who could save us. Right? Let's do it. So Sigmund Freud knew that there was something in man that he could tap into. What was that? Let's go to 2nd Edris. Let's start at 3 and 21. Let's read it. Second Edges 3 
and 21. Read it. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed. But the first Adam, who bared a wicked heart, transgressed, right? The disobedience, doing what God said don't do, right? Listening to his woman to eat, right? Doing what she convinced him to do. She doing what the serpent convinced her to do, which we know as seraphim or fallen angel. Right? Read. And was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. So be all they that are born of him. So there's something genetic that, that's a genetic change in us that happened through their disobedience. It's sort of the science of what they call today epigenetics. When something happens, traumatic, that can go from one generation to the next generation, right? So what was this created through that sin? What was created? Read. Thus infirmity was made permanent. That infirmity was made permanent permanent and now would affect the children of Adam and Eve. Read. And the law also in the heart of the people. And the law also in the heart of the people. So it's a law in mankind now. It's a law that would have us be subjected to what? If we're not careful, making the wrong choices. Or Choose strictly for temporal satisfaction. Adam and Eve initially when they took of the fruit, they saw that it was good. It was a fruit to make one wise. So they're willing to sacrifice the long term for the short term satisfaction. And I'm pausing there so that you can really, I want y'all to really focus there. They're willing to sacrifice the future of their children, the legacy of their family, everything to satisfy one moment. See? Read on. With the malignity of the root, so that the good departed away. So that the good departs away. Read. And the evil abode still. And the evil abode still. Well, we'll be we'll begin to make excuses to why it's okay to do against God's law. Right? This is what happened. This is the malignant root, something in us that Bernays and Sigmund Freud could tap into. Our desire to satisfy ourselves without thinking of the consequences of how it affects other people. Selfishness, like Lucifer. Read. So the times passed away, and the years were brought to an end. Then didst thou raise thee up a servant called David. No, I need you to go where it says it it will it falls on the children too that came out of them. Let me get it here. One second. Yeah, let's start at nineteen. Verse nineteen, and thy glory went through four gates. It says. Get closer to the mic so they can, because you, you're a little quiet. And their glory went through four gates. And the glory of the Most High went through four gates. Of fire. Of fire. And of earthquake. Earthquake. And of wind. And of wind. And of cold. And of cold. These are portals, read. That thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob. That the Most High would give the law to the children of Israel, read. And diligence unto the generation of Israel. And what diligence to what? Unto the generations. generations of Israel. So the Most High gave us the law to battle the sin, the malignant root 
that came with Adam and Eve's disobedience. See? Read. And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart. But he didn't take away that wicked heart. So something else still abides in our members, in our minds, to do what? To lean towards self-satisfaction. That stayed. So that what? So that, that's right, folks, that he would give us a choice. When certain instances happen through temptation, to choose him. That's free will. If he would just take that away, how do you know who really loves God and really respect the God who made him? So he left the malignant root there so that when the evil tempter comes, the heavens can see that we've, we chose heaven over carnality. We've chosen God over Satan. So, so there's something there, a malignant root. Now I'm going to show you, tell you how to recognize the, the malignant root when it happens. Read. That thy law might bring forth fruit in them. So, so the law might bring fruit in them, read. 3 and 21, second address. For the first Adam bearing a wicked heart. A wicked heart. Transgressed. Come on. And was overcome. Come on. And so be all they that are born of him. So be all they that are born of him. So Sigmund Freud and Bernays, two demonic sorcerers, was able to tap in and understand that that exists in all people. The desire to satisfy themselves. So how can we promote through advertisement? The insatiable appetite, getting satisfied. We can show a woman next to a new refrigerator and everyone on the block, even though your food, you just got food out of your refrigerator. Your refrigerator works. You will throw out a working refrigerator to get the new model. How can I have people buy what they don't need? Now, why was that important for them? So you will have nothing to be left for your children. If something works, it works. But if you're keeping up with the Joneses, you're spending just to keep up, leaving nothing for the children to come, the next generation. You're healthy. And they don't need good people being healthy. So they'll make you believe the freedom is to walk down the street holding a cigarette. They call it cigarettes. The advertisement through the New York Times torches of freedom. <laughs> 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 How stupid do they think people are? So if they can put a white woman up doing it, I, I was, it won't be long before our sister will say, well, hold up. If they're doing it, we should do it too. Same thing with feminism. There was no oppressing black women amongst black men. We were both enslaved. But it was Sigmund Freud, the, the children of Satan right here. Wait, wait, where is he? Where is he? The demon. It was Sigmund Freud. He so happened to be Jewish. And Edward Bernays. It was through their psychology that they were able to get women and make women have straight resentment against men. Folks, men didn't change that much. Okay? Where women would have a resentment. Why should they work and we don't work? Why this and why that? When 
There were fail safes put in place. Well, women had more security back then. Okay? Why do you think alimony was in place? If a man decided he wanted to do something, he couldn't go anywhere without, and that's why the songs came out, it's cheaper to keep her. A man just couldn't just go on his own way and the woman didn't have, her whole life was taken care of if he decided to, to, to just, just divorce or get rid of her. Women had it made in the shade, didn't have to work, could pick up a part-time job, and the only thing they had to do was focus on raising that man's ch children. And th these demons right here say, you know what? We have to separate black men from black, black women from black men. But we can't let you know we're targeting them. Okay? So what we'll do is, we'll make everyone believe that it's a white woman's issue. We'll make everyone believe that it's a white woman's issue. Making it where women wanted to do things that men were doing. When men, straight men, don't want a woman trying to do what he's doing. A man who desire a man wants someone doing what they're doing. So they started to teach what? A malignant root. Where men would think it's okay to be metrosexual, whatever that is, or in between, or a gentleman. And they began to program things and make women believe that it's not right if they're not deemed equal or, or viewed as men. Hell on earth throwing the whole family of the earth into chaos. Hence the reason why the Most High had to, had to send the flood, folks. I need y'all to think about that. They was able to tap into something and, to, and convince us to operate outside of our nature. Using advertisement, more so, and financing wickedness. So that was the law. Sigmund Freud was able to tap into the malignant root and say, I can show you how we can convince them to do anything. How? Well, we can put some people together, some actors, and make them believe that they're having fun and all that, and all people that, that isn't purchasing what they're peddling are getting left out. One thing about that malignant root, that spirit, no one wants to be the outsider. So we have to promote what? You got it. The hive mind where you must be included or you're nothing more than an incel. You're nothing more than just duddy. You're, you know, you, 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 you know you're, you're not like the rest. You're passe. See, they knew it was a law in people. What law? The law or a need to belong also. When these people they were getting to push their agendas were miserable people. These are miserable people. Once the cameras stopped, they'd be like, All right, go, go, get out of here. We, we, we don't care about you. So Paul talks about that law. Let's end it. Let's go to Romans 7 and 7 real quick. Paul speaks of that law. There's a law called the malignant root. That's the law that Christ did away with. The law of sin or the malignant root. Christians would have you believe when it's talking about that law, the law of sin, that it's talking about the laws given to us through Moses. We're not under the law. We're under grace. It's not even talking about the law of Moses there. It's talking about the law of sin and death, that malignant root. That if we follow Christ, that's right. You can defeat that particular spirit through Christ and following the law. You put that law of sin under subjection. 
This is how you defeat, defeat the evil that came with the fallen ones. So you must know how they release hell on earth, what their agendas are, and you have to understand how to overcome to spiritually fight when faced with decisions. Hence the reason why God gave us the law. See? Now, let's go real quick. I'm going to pull it up with you. Romans, the book of Romans, the seventh chapter. Romans. Let, let's start. Yes. Let's start at the uh, bu, 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 seventh verse. Romans seven and seven. Hold what? on. Let me show. I want to get it for them. All right. <laughs> Romans seven and seven. Let's read it. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Is the law sin? That means the laws that was given to Moses, because the Christians out there would make you believe that. Following God's law is sin. To eat what you want, shrimp, crabs, lobster, and all this other crustaceans. As if you can pray over it and it's okay. Then they'll chop up the scriptures and laws saying, listen, the most high, God made all to be received in thanksgiving. All of the animals that are unclean according, I mean, all the animals that are clean according to the dietary law it's talking about in Timothy. Oh, nothing should, all should be received. No, it's not talking about unclean food. You eat unclean food that's to follow the temple and you die. Sickness has come on you for eating unclean food. All right. So I'm, I'm just fixing a lot of these lies that come through Christian theories and lies. These pagans. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Is the law of Moses sin? Read. God forbid. No. Read. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. Paul said he would not have known what sin looked like if he didn't have the law saying, thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not do that. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Thou shalt not commit adultery. If there's no law, then how can you point out the wrong in you? So he says, don't go around claiming that the law is done away with because this is how we identify sin. Right? Read. For I had not known lust, except the law, excuse me. Yeah, except the law had said, thou should not covet. It says, for I had not known lust, except the law of Moses had said, thou shalt not covet. So Paul is telling Christians everywhere. Don't be trying to use me to say it's okay to sin on purpose. Get out of here with that. Get understanding. Okay. Read. But sin taking occasion by the commandment. Now, now check it out. Check it out. But sin taking occasion by commandment. What sin? What commandment? The law of sin and death, the malignant root that came with Adam and Eve. Read. Brought in me all manner of concupiscence. Brought in me all manner of concupiscence. Sexual, artnet sexual behavior. So there's another law, even though I know what Moses said do, other things come to mind. Hence the reason they push Right now in the earth where all, everyone with a phone, children and everything have access, has access to pornography. Eventually, if you, if you make it out in your mind first, it's only a matter of time before you execute what you've learned or what you've been watching real time. And I wonder what people... What, what manner of people created the pornography business? Oh, 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 the people of the law, you would have us believe. So even Paul says, even though there's another law working in me, it doesn't stop 
negative thoughts or lustful thoughts from entering me. We're all subjected to that. Right? Read. For without the law, sin was dead. For without the law, sin was dead. When I didn't know the law, I had no knowledge of right or wrong. So if you don't know the law, you don't know what sin is. Hence the reason why they try to tell people don't follow the Bible. The Bible's tampered with. Who know who wrote the Bible? Because why? Without the law of God, people out there really don't know what they're doing wrong. They think because others are doing it, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. But it's through the law that gives us the knowledge of sin. And now our conscience is actually built towards righteousness and correcting the wrong with ourselves, our family, and that extends to our community. Read. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived. Sin revived. And I died. When the commandment came, sin revived and I died. What commandment? The law of sin and death. Read. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Come on. Why? Because when you begin to follow the law, you start to realize there's things that you just cannot do anymore. You, you start to make more righteous choices. The lust of the world isn't having the same pull on you. Right? Read. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment. But then there's something else working. You're trying to do right. But now there's another little devil on your shoulder saying. Because you'll win one bout. You'll win another bout. But then there's another decision. And it's there again. <laughs> sin, taking occasion. By the commandment, deceive me, deceive me, and by it slew me, and by it slew me. Right? The sin taketh what? Occasion by commandment, and it deceived you. If you began to think, well, I can do this, and it, I'll be excused. It's okay if I do this. Read. Wherefore the law is holy. So Paul realized the law is holy. Why? Because it's through the law you realize something else is fighting against you. And what's fighting against you is what the demons utilize when they take you as a host. Right? They know that malignant root still exists, but they can only enter if you sin. See? So the advertisers learn how to tap into that to keep us broke. And now the evildoers want you to tap into the sin so that the fallen demons can gain hosts for a moment to wreck shop. Right? So Paul recognized there's something trying to get into me, but the law is my what? Armor. <laughs> the fact that I know that I'm getting tempted proves the law is good because without the law, I, I just would have dived into it without, without conscience. So I find that the law is good because I recognize there's something urging me to break it. Right? <laughs> Come on. Romans 7 to 12. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy. So now Paul realized the laws of Moses is holy. It's good. It helps me balance this other thing in me that's fighting against what's right. Read. And just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? Come on. God forbid. Read. But sin, that it might appear sin, worketh death, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Come on. For we know that the law is spiritual. We know that the law is spiritual, read. But I am carnal. But I am carnal. I'm suffering from that malignant root of Adam and Eve. Read. Sold under sin. And I'm sold under sin. I'm in a continual battle until Christ saves me from the flesh. 
And those in Christ realize every day they're conscious of this battle. That we're being convinced. We've been inundated with advertisement. Peer pressure is going on. We're feeling left out because everyone else appears to be having fun. But the law, which is good, will have us view things the way it should be, be viewed. And that view is, broad is the way that leadeth to damnation. I'm not going to be coerced through advertisement and everything else to break that agreement with God. That moment will pass. The ball will drop on New Year's. People will wake up from their hypnosis and go back to normal life. See? <laughs> Come on. For that which I do, I allow not. So here it is. Here's the battle. Verse. Verse 15. Verse 15. For what I would, that do I not. It says, for that which I do, I allow not. And for what that I do, I not. But what I hate, that I do. So Paul understood that sometimes he find himself doing things that he know is contrary to what's right. Right? So even the disciples, all of us dealt with daily battles, being pulled through temptation. Read verse 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. He says, if then I do which I would not, I consent unto the law that it's good. Now, why does he consent to the law that it's good? Because he's seeing the things that he's thinking are doing wrong. And by that knowledge, he can correct himself. See? His conscience is what? Searing him, accusing him to a degree where he's saying, you know what? These thoughts have to stop these thoughts. This action, I must stop this action. So he can sense that Christ is still in them. The law is good. Right? So sometimes there's good days, bad days. There's battles, that, you know, there's battles we lose, but we win the war. To, because we still understand what's good. That there's an opportunity to do what still stand, even though the enemy knocks us down sometimes. Right? Read. Verse 17. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So he realized he want to do the right thing. But he says, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now I, I'm starting to realize it's no more me. There's two things happening here because I'm in Christ. I realize, for I know that in me, it says, now that is no more I that doeth it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now, why is that important that he recognize sin? Because now he can do what it takes to what? Put that sin under subjection. Okay, I can fast, I can pray, I can abstain from evil doing. Because this thing is getting out of control. Right? Read. For I know, verse 18, that in me, that is in my flesh. In my flesh. Dwelleth no good thing. Dwelleth no good thing. I have to realize that the law is good. And we, born of Adam, is subjected to sin. And can be coerced or convinced into breaking God's law. That knowledge in of itself, if we, if we take that knowledge, that's, folks, it's victory. There is no good thing in me. Therefore, I must lean on the law to carry me. I must lean on Christ to lead me. Because there's something else working contrary. And I want to satisfy what? Those desires. Th those affections. That's what I want to do. But that's the law of sin and death. If I can recognize it. I can win the war. If I ignore it. 
It wins the war and pulls me down and drags us into hell. Right? Come on. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. To will is present with me, but how to execute this on a daily basis, Paul says, I find not. It's hard. Especially with everyone else doing life differently. It's hard. Right? <laughs> Read. Romans 7 and 19. For the good that I would, I do not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. I find myself falling into the things I shouldn't do. Right, Paul says. Read. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. But sin that dwelleth in me. So they realize, even Paul realized, there's something else comes to life when I'm tempted. Right? It actually does what? It distorts my, my thoughts. And also, it makes it where I where where I'm not heat, I'm not taking heed to my obligation to God. See, <laughs> read seven and twenty one Romans. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present. Here's a law. I find that when I do good. Evil is present. Now, how do you know he found this and he really self-examined himself? When, he, when you do the good thing, it came with a choice. You chose to do the good thing, which means evil was a choice also. <laughs> right? So he really looked into this spirit that works against him and say, I know how it works because I'm not just doing good. The earth is so wicked, I have to choose to do good. Every time I do good, there was a choice where I could have did the contrary. That's how wicked the world is. They've released hell on us, where it's much easier and more, more acceptable to choose sin. Right? So that's how we started to recognize, okay, these thoughts in me isn't, isn't me. I want to do right. I want the kingdom. Something else is pulling on me. And folks, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, folks. You have to think about it. Sometimes it's subtle. You could be sitting with a friend of yours. And for a moment, a Nephilim will jump into that person, a demon, and will say something that would tempt you to do good, against good. And you don't even realize, you think you're just talking with a person, and something comes out from that individual that's now testing your fortitude, your position in Christ, your position in this truth. And then it'll just jump right up, right up. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. That's how it works. See? It could be a loved one. It could be anything. Read. Romans 7 and 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. He says, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Read. But I see another law in my members. I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. Warring against the law of my mind. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. The law of sin, which is in my members, which is what? The five senses. What I hear, what I see, what I taste, what I smell, you know, what I, what I touch. There's another law. I need to satisfy myself. So I recognize that's another man working, right? That's the law of sin and death that came through the sin of Adam and Eve. 
and through the law and Christ, we recognize something else is in us. And not make an excuse to cover that demon by saying, that's just my personality. I've always been like this. You have to accept me the way you are. No, I don't. You shouldn't have to accept me the way I am and, and how I was shaped in sin. That's utterly ridiculous. There's a law of civility of how we must interact with one another according to Christ. And that's the only person I have to accept. When you hear people say, well, I'm, you got to accept me the way I am. I've always been like that. That's not that person talking. That's, that's, that's the other guy. Because Christ said, what? Repent everyone from their past selves or who you are. I don't have to accept. You don't have to impose on me. And, you, and that's how you know they know it's something wrong. Right? Because they'll tell you, you have to accept it. <laughs> you don't have to get somebody to accept something that benefits them. Or that they care about or, or like. Right? So when people say, well, they, I've always been like this and I never had no problems in the past. Other people accepted it. Nah. I'm not. Okay? <laughs> Making an excuse for the demon. Read the 24th verse. Romans 7 and 24. O wretched man that I am. O wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who can deliver me from this? We know Christ. Read. I thank God through Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the Lord of God. With the mind I serve the law of God. I'm conscious of him first. Read. But with the flesh, the law of sin. But with the flesh, the law of sin. So I, now I have the power to keep that sin in subjection. Realizing that it's a different person working in me. Which, oppose, which opposes what? My dominion. My promise. It's not going anywhere. So now... We must learn how to keep that spirit into, in subjection. And you know how you do it? Through Christ. You cannot react to triggers. When you feel that thing in your stomach and about to react, that's that guy. So we, we've dealt with a system now in place where there's triggers everywhere to get us off, to actually get us out of our stance and our peace that we usually have with God in Christ. That means when you're feeling that thing, you have to not say anything and you cannot touch anything. Because whatever you say, it's from hell. And, and if you react physically to it, it can mean to it can mean death. Let's get it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's get Matthew 5. Matthew 8 and 28. And thank you all for hitting the like button here. I appreciate that. Matthew 8 and 28. Let's read it. Matthew 8 and 28. Read. And when he was come to the other side of the country of the Gergesi. A matter of fact, yeah, hold on, hold on. Let me get that. We already had that, yeah. right? Yes, sir. This is what I want. Matthew 10 and 16. Matthew 10, verse 16. Read. Behold, I sent you forth, send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Read. 
Be ye therefore wise as serpents. Be wise as serpents as we navigate in this earth. Read. And harmless as doves. And harmless as doves. We must be in this earth as peaceful a people as we can. What lieth, as much life within us, we must be at peace with all men. Folks, I don't have a problem with anyone. I don't have a problem with any race of people. Okay, outright. But I identify, that's right, I identify the synagogue of Satan in particular because Esau has a plan to eradicate us. Not all of them, but from, but from the hierarchy and governments of this earth where Esau lies, their plan is to get rid of our people. I don't have a problem. It's my, it's my, it's my position, according to the word, to identify that man of sin so that our people can navigate wise as serpents and harmless as a dove in this world. So first of all, we must walk understanding that what? As the lost sheep of Israel, we are between the cross, crosshairs. We're the target. Don't trust anything they're peddling. Whether it be TV, news, reports, don't do it. The View, TV, Oprah, I don't care who they roll out. Don't listen to any of them. Filter everything that's being said through the word. Okay? The only commandment that we're obligated to follow are the commandments written of in this book. We're not here for mandates, what's mandatory, none of that crap. We're here strictly for the laws of God and to navigate and be at peace with all men and not listen to the, not listen and, and, and do not follow the devil at all. They cannot tell us what to do with our families. They cannot tell us what to do with our children. That's an infringement on our freedom of religion. Matthew 5. How do we navigate? How must we navigate? Last scripture. Matthew 5. Let's start at the second verse. Read it. Matthew 5 and 2. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed is the poor in, the poor in spirit. Those that are always... You're feeling down. You feel like we're marginalized and others are better than us. No. We're the kingdom of heaven. Folks, it tells us in the scriptures that once the Most High give us back this earth, once we're in position, folks, there will be no remembrance of anything, of any of the captivity that happened to our people. That's how great the kingdom will be for us. We won't even think of what happened to us here. It won't even be an afterthought. Read. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Come on. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Come on. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Read. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Read. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Come on. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, not the troublemakers. If there's a person that's every time they walk, they come up, they stirring something up or talking about other people. Listen, I'll be I'll straighten that out immediately. You're not here to make peace. When you have a person that's in a room and the only thing they can do is point out what's wrong, so that now, now the whole ambiance or atmosphere now has changed to darkness. Where there's not a peaceful moment. That's not a peacemaker. Okay? A, pe a peacemaker is exactly that. That people love, that you'll have it where the majority of others love your presence because there's peace around you. 
There's not nagging. There's no complaining. There's no argument. There's no conflict all the time. It's just, you know, at peace. And it is a shame because sometimes you want to pick up the phone, you want to talk, to, but but sometimes you see the phone and you don't want to pick it up because you're like, okay, am I going to be down after this call? Because the only time this person calls or these people call is when they're complaining about something. Okay. When they're complaining about something. It's like, where's your peace? Where is, listen, I'm just calling to say hello. May the most high bless you. I love, wanted to tell you I love you. We, I think we've come to a point and we have to break that with a norm. We have normalized complaining for conversation. I don't know what I'm going to do about this person. They just came yesterday and na da 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 And everybody they talk to, instead of just saying, yeah, how you doing? The first thing they bring up, hey, you know, you know, six people died yesterday. Da, 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 yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness. Where's the peace? Bless are the peacemakers, Reed. For they shall be called the children of God. Come on. Matthew 5 and 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Come on. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. All manner of evil against you falsely. They're going to try to shape a narrative with our people. If we claim we're Israelites, Israelites or state claim to our true identity of the Bible as Israelites, they're going to try to deem that anti-Semitic, folks. And try to claim that this can make a rise and something happening to other people. Liars. When we know, according to the Bible, the law is the only thing that can fix us as a people. The laws of God. Read. For my sake, rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Come on. Ye are the salt of the earth. But the, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? I need you to go down here, right? Go to the 17th verse. Verse 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. The Most High didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. He come to fulfill it. So the only way back to fight the chaos that comes with them releasing hell is to come back to the law, statute, and commandments of God. Christ commands that. Read. But verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Come on. Till all be fulfilled. Until all be fulfilled. Let's go to the 21st verse. verse Here's the point I wanted to make. Before ending, this is Christ stating this. Read verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill, read. And whoever whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Of judgment, murder. Shall be in judgment of what? Uh, in danger of the final judgment, which is the second death. That's killing without cause. Read. But I say unto you. That whosoever is angry with his brother without this, a cause. This is key, folks. You're angry with you're angry with your brother without a cause. You can have people who say, you know what? The person did nothing wrong to me, but it's just something I don't like about that person. That's a demon to make analysis that way. That's a demon. It's something I can't... Just putting out something when no one did anything against you. Hating your brother or sister without a cause. Read. Shall be in danger of the judgment. Come on. And whosoever shall say to his, to his brother, Raka. Raka here is Greek for fool. Dismissing someone without 
first hearing them, understanding them, discounting them as fools or foolishness, like most would do those who teach the truth today. Root, read. Shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say thou fool, read, shall be in danger of hellfire. Come on. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that, that, that thy brother hath ought against thee. When it says bring your gift to the altar, in a nutshell, that means before we pray to God. In the Old Testament, in order for certain sins to be forgiven, we would have to bring a sacrifice or a gift to the altar or priest so that the priest can do what? Send up prayers and blessings for our homes. God, Christ is saying, before we pray to God in the name of Christ, do what? Leave 24. Thy gift, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. No, get up off of your knees before God. Read. First be reconciled to that brother. First go take care of your business with your brother or sister you have an art with. Before you fall on your knees begging or, or praying or blessing the God who you claim to love. That's hypocrisy. Why? Because God, the God not only loves you, he loves the brother or sister you have a problem with. See? That's the hypocrisy that comes with those who claim to believe in God. He don't only love you. He loved the person that you have something in your heart against. So what God is saying is to get up off your knees and try to stop faking it as if you're down with God. And praying and saying, oh, Ahia, oh, Ashaya, Ashaya, to seem holy before other people when you got problems with your own family. And like, like I said, some people have a problem with me and think I'm confrontational when I'm not because I don't let the sun go down on, on my wrath. If, I, if, if someone says something where there's an issue, I go to them in the spirit of meekness to make sure there isn't an issue. Okay? I talk with them because I don't want to go to sleep believing what I'm thinking concerning that individual. Because Satan is going to use that and begin to water that seed. And now I'm going to treat this person as if they actually done something against me. See? So he's saying, no, get up off your knees and stop faking it. And make it right with your brother or sister. How can you pray and say you're down with God and you know in your heart you hate your own brother or sister? And the brother or sister probably didn't do anything to you. Read. And then coming off of thy gift. Verse. Verse 25. Agree with thine adversary quickly. 24. Leave thy, thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother. And then come and offer thy gift. So what the Most High is saying is, get it right with the people you have a problem with. And then come pray to me. And I'll send forth my blessing to the house. I'm not going to bless you. While you're cursing someone else. See? And I'm showing you how what? How these spirits, these demons cannot take hold of you. By people holding grudges. Breaking alliances and friendships. If, you, if we practice this, hell has no, use, has no place in us. Right? Read. Verse 25, agree with thine adversary quickly. Agree with thine adversary quickly. Don't be in conflict with someone who's at odds with you. Find a place of agreement. And this adversary right now, it's speaking of authority. If you have police... If you have people, someone who has more power than you. You agree with them quickly. And I've seen this even on every level. And I'm going to say it right now. 
men are stronger. And when it comes to sisters, I know what they're pushing out there on the media, folks. But there's a lot of things I'm seeing on subways with people, women are getting in men's faces. And man, the retaliation is grave. You have to understand when someone has the authority and agree with that immediately. Okay? See, men naturally understands this. And I'm speaking just on that level right now. If I get into a confrontation with this man, there's a chance one of us going to lose our lives. So we can interact with each other with what? With peace in mind. With coming to a resolution in mind. So when it's talking about an adversary, it's someone who's opposing you or could harm you. Find a place of agreement where the devil cannot come in and cause what? Attacks, battle, death, like those Nephilim in the book of Enoch. When a police pull you over or the authority pulls you over, agree with them immediately. Yes, officer, what would you like? Would you like to grab my uh, license and registration? It's right there above my head. I'm a black man. I've done this. And the police start laughing. <laughs> I'm a black man. Everything you want is, is convenient. I didn't, I, I'm not putting nothing low. Not in glove boxes. And yeah, by the way, I have to tell you. Uh, I got a camera in my car at all times. I respect you. I even sent a few dollars to the uh, to the p police fraternity thing when y'all knocked at my door. You know, I'm down with you. And he started laughing. And then he says, okay, where is it? He pulls it down. He grabs my license and registration, looks at it. And he says, go on, Mr. Shepard. And start laughing and get in his car and leave. That has happened. I'm not going to say, man, I'm being marginalized. This is racism. Hey, you know I didn't run that light. Listen, if he said you ran that light, you ran that light. Work it out in court. Do not argue with authority. This is not a scenario where you want to have a political stance with someone standing over you with a gun. Read. Matthew 5 and 25. Come on. Agree with thine adversary quickly. What? Agree with thine adversary. What? Quickly. Quickly. Because when you're trying to be what they would call a hard behind, they're going, guess what? And there's nothing they got to do tonight anyway. I'm like, okay. Put your hands behind your back. I'm like, what? Oh, no, now you're trying to cooperate. No, listen, I got two, I got two registrations. Put your hand behind your back. That's the scriptures, folks. This is what Christ is saying. Read. While start are in the way with him. Do what? Whilst thou art in the way, excuse me, agree with your, thine adversary quickly. Yes, sir, officer, while you're in the way with them. While it's still on talking terms. Read. Whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. That's how you know it's talking about police. They'll deliver you to the judge. And the judge deliver thee to the officer. Now, if the judge say you've been given, if the police said you gave him a hard time. He's going to deliver you to the officer. And thou be cast into prison. Then you're, you're cast into prison and did what? Read. Verily I say unto you, thou shalt by no means come out thence. Till until thou, you paid the uttermost, go ahead. Until thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Until thou hast paid the uttermost bail. Bail. Bail or fine. 
So even the Bible says, listen, when they come before you, understand, folks, yes, some of them are outright race police. Because of the perception we've, that, that how we're being portrayed through the media, some of the police are outright afraid of pulling us over, thinking that we might have some level of weaponry in the car. So Christ says, listen, don't be triggered from what's in you. Don't go into this race debate. Agree with them. Give them what they want, and they'll let you on your way. And folks, this just doesn't apply to us being pulled over. If we do this, we'll have entry all the way into the wilderness if we don't get out of pocket and allow a demon to dictate our course. We still have to be in the world we were born under. But we have to learn how to navigate knowing that they have released hell on the population. With that, can't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Hebrew and Bible Academy, the promised seed, where I go into that battle against Nephilim. Also, I'm going to teach, according to the Bible, the chosen seed from Genesis to the book of Revelation to show beyond any shadow of a doubt that they know the children, the children of slaves the North American Indians, the people of South Central uh, uh, America, uh, South Central uh, uh, and North America. That we were all he we all Hebrews, folks. They we they know we're Israelites. Also, those are the Fiji Islands, the South Pacific, ha Hawaii, the Fiji Islands, Samoans. They're all Israelites. Also, in, in parts of Asia, the Vietnamese, the Cambodians. That's right. The, that's right, folks. The Filipino. They're all from the 10 tribes who left out. That and more we'll be covering tomorrow in the Hebrew and Bible Academy. And also the samurai. Samurai comes from Samaria. They destroyed the samurais of Japan, knowing that they were from the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm going into that and more, and we're going to identify the true race of Ruth, proven that she wasn't a Moabite at all. There's nothing like the Academy on Earth, and I hope to see you there tomorrow, 9 a.m. Elder Lawyer, uh, you know, he's over in Africa right now. He has some nice footage from the work, the church, and everything that's going on there. And we're going to present that for the first 10 minutes, uh, and then we're going into the news. <laughs> There's nothing like it. Hebrew and Bible Academy, Go to historytimes.org, be a part of this awakening, and uh, we'll make sure you receive the, the three lessons you've missed, okay? Uh, we did the creation of the universe, tracing the serpent seed. A matter of fact, they only missed two. Tomorrow is the promise seed. So you'll get the two you missed, and we'll jump right in tomorrow with the promise seed. You don't want to miss this for nothing. Uh, it's, it's everything. Go to historytimes.org to enroll. Also, if you want to financially support us, there's other ways. If you have Cash App, dollar sign, GOCC144, donate. That's the specific one that you'll actually donate to if you have Cash App. And that, that's an appreciation for the live broadcast that we do weekly. On, on uh, uh, Wednesdays as well as Sabbaths. Because what? YouTube, even though they advertise... We have over 100,000 subscribers, millions of views, but they refuse to allow us to monetize this peaceful awakening. Okay? Even though they're making hands over fists, they're making millions off of our channel. They won't allow us to monetize. So I'm asking you, if these lessons that we do for the free broadcast, where you're not paying anything at all, if you can help, you can just do that to... You can do that, do so by your cash app, dollar sign, GOCC144 donate. If you don't have cash app, that's all right. Go to gatheringofchrist.org, go into donate, and one of those drop downs will be other options, other options in which you can actually donate if you don't have cash app, okay? 
With that, may the Most High be with you. Stay prayed up. Sin not. We will soon see Zion. Shalom. To Zion. I was lost, but now I'm found. I'm a child of Israel. I heard the sound. You hear the sound. Please give me the strength to stand today. With my eyes towards the east, show me. I know I must stand for a new heaven, a new earth. Show me the way to Zion. I'm on my knees, laying my life on the line. I'm begging, please, please don't let. Please don't